uh, on 28 December 2022, I woke up with, uh, to the following news. The inhabitants of a block, of two blocks of flats in the uh, Madrid municipality of Villalba had been evicted because of a fire. In addition to the people treated by the emergency service for poor injuries, seven residents have to be hospitalized for intoxication. Although the investigation into these events is still ongoing, the competent authorities agreed on one fundamental fact. The fire had originated in three different sources in the communal areas, in, in the communal areas of the building, and the fire bridged detected traces of gasoline. Everything seemed to indicate the following. The fire had been arson. By now, you may be wondering what this story has to do with the electro, electron authoritarian neoliberalism and reactionary um, cuddling of social har harm. But also, perhaps more interest, interestingly, why anyone would want to burn down an entire building, building with all its inhabitants inside. The block of flats I am talking about has some particular char characteristics. The entire building belongs to Sociedad de Gestión de Activos Procedentes de la Reestructuración Bancaria, better known, known as SAREP or Spain's Pub Bank. This public private limited company was created in 2012 by the government in a process supervised by the European Central Bank, the European Commission and the International Monetary Fund. Sareb's mission was as, as follows, to buy with public money the real estate, the real estate and toxic assets of the institution of the back of the bank institutions, institutions bailed out by the financial crisis. It is important to, to bear in mind the following idea. Since 2012, <coughs> housing has become a social problem in Spain. First, with the wave of evictions for non-payment non non of mortgage debt and from 2016 uh, with the housing re rental bubble, which manifests itself both in the dif difficulty of the lower middle classes and the proletarized sectors of society to cope with the large prices rises and in its crudest aspect the new prominence of evictions due to the inability to cope with these prices. Nowadays, for the movement, the movement fighting for the rise to housing, the prototypical subject that attends the <coughs> assemblies, collectives and trade unions focused on this problem no longer corresponds to the profile of a person in debt whose dream of owning a home has been snatched away by the crisis, but rather to a subject forgotten by, the, by, the, by housing policies in Spain. People who, even in, even in the years of economic prosperity, were unable to acquire a home of their own. Those who were born too late to be able to aspire to it, and people in situations of poverty and extreme vulnerability to which their migrant status is often added. Some of some of those affected by this new situation ask themselves the following question. If we have no money to buy a house and the prices are too high to pay the rent, where is our right to housing? Where are we going to live? In a country where the, sh the short stage of public housing represents a structural problem, activists and those affected by the housing movement uh, began to make a series of demands to the government in relation to Sareb. If the toxic real estate assets of the private banks had been rescued with public money and the problem of access, access to housing was undeniable, for these groups it was leg legitimate to demand, firstly, firstly, the need to stop evictions being carried out due to the demands of Sareb itself, and above all, the transfer of all these toxic assets to the public housing stock. Neither of these two demands has been met. Sarev continues to evict tenants, sells its real estate assets to Sothine associated to big, in, to big investment funds such as Blackstone or Ipoges that impose both pricing crises and abusive clauses in rental contracts, 
and keeps thousands thousands of housing buildings that are current, currently uninhabited out of the rental market. The latter was the case of the two blocks of flats affected by the arson attack in Villalba. Both belonged to a construction company that went, that went bankrupt in the 2008 crisis. In 2012, Sareb used public money to rescue, rescue it as a toxic building, and since then, until 2020, the building remains empty. It was then when several families and young people in a state of vulnerability and extreme poverty decided, with the support of Asamblea de Villalba, a local collective fighting for housing, to occupy um, square, square? Yeah. Occupy, occupy the two Sarek buildings to inhabit a total of 86 homes. On 28 December, the Assembly of Villalba released a statement on its social networks denouncing the, the events, the, the fire. In addition to expressions of solidarity from members and sympathizers of the struggle for housing or people who simply considered, uh, considered unacceptable that someone would try to burn all these families alive, there were also reactions full of resentment. Here are just a few of them. The first one. Now, don't let them back in. There are many of us who pay the rent and we don't sponge of others. No vivimos el cuento en Spanish. The second one. When you get lost due to negligence in the bush, they charge you for rescue service, right? Well, these people should be charged for, this, for the fire service, the police, etc. For this, the squatters, ocupas, do cling to the system and don't deny them entry. Mm -hmm. And the last one is the, the most radical, is the, is the following. Fuck them. I wish the building had burned down. Squatting equal junkies selling, consuming drugs, and bothering the rest of Villalvinos. Less squattering and more concentration camps. The, Asa Uy, the Asamblea de Villalba linked, linked the arson attack to the construction of a moral panic and a type of, of criminalization of poverty linked to the media and institutional discourse against the so-called squatters, ocupas. People who, in the absence of a house alternative, decide to move illegally into empty homes. Also, the vast majority of squads affect large proper property owners accused by, this, by social movements <laughs> of participating in housing speculation, banks, investment funds, large property managers, or Saref itself, the discourses against squatting have directed, have directed their message at the small proper, property owners and, in turn, have constructed an image of the squatter profile which, far from arousing feelings of solidarity towards the poor, criminalizes those most affected by the housing crisis. Within these discourses, people without a housing alternative who seek a desperate solution to their homelessness are related to, are related to the demonized figures of the drug addict, the thief, the anti-system, the maladjustment immigrant, and the quintessential background of lazy people. I mean, people who, is in this, who who are in this situation because they deserve it, because they have not made an effort like the others, because they have not been able to adapt to, to, adapt to the rules of the game that we, at least, at least still, are, capo I, uh, are capo capable of complying with. The anti-squad discourse in Spain has, repeat, has repeated its, its rewards. <coughs> On the one hand, a large part of the middle class targeted by these messengers expresses, expresses itself, it, its feeling of freed and resentment towards the squatter and demands greater protection of private, of private pro property from the public authorities. 
and the strength, strengthening of the criminal justice system for this type of situation. On the other hand, this propagation of the feeling of threat and the need for the state to provide a more forceful and effective response to cases of squatting has given rise to a significant social acceptance of, a, of companies such as the Socupa, which, acting in the manner of a parapolized group, is dedicated to carrying out evictions extrajudicially extra <coughs> judicial, and uses criminal practice such as coercion, threats, physical aggressions, and break-ins. In addition to harm, harm owners who have decided to take the law into their, their own hands by hitting the Socupa services, one of the most controversial facts about the emergen, emergence, uh, emergence of this company is that some local councils have decided to collaborate <coughs> directly with the company. In fact, Villalba Town Council itself subcontracted a company linked to Salvador Palazón, the administrator of the Socupa. In my view, uh, <laughs> in my view, an investigation into resentment or the rise of reactionary positions has to be seen in relation to a series of trans transformations within neoliberalism since 2008 that have demonstrate, demonstrated the conceptual and empirical output of what Ian Brough and, other, and others have called authoritarian neoliberalism. The case of Villalba, arson attack and all that surrounds, surrounds it is not only a clear example of the relationship I have just mentioned, but also serves to suggest how the problems linked to the social crisis of housing can be, a, can be of great interest, interest for research on the authoritarian tendencies of neoliberalism in the Spanish context. ¿Cómo voy de tiempo? Eh, llevas 13 minutos. Vale. <coughs> As Matthias Leandro Seidel points out, the concept of authoritarian neoliberalism has been used in recent discussions of neoliberalism to refer to issues such as the end of its hegemonic and consensual moment, the authoritarianism inherent in the inherent at, at neoliberal rationality itself, or the emergence, em, uh, emergence of a new reactionary wave linked to the new all right. Mm -hmm. In this aspect, although Marcus Taylor already used this term in 2002 to refer to, Ch to Chile during the Pinochet era, in recent years, the concept of authoritarian neoliberalism has been used to analyze a new stage in the history of neoliberalism. <laughs> this is the case of Jan Bruff, who, by articulating Nikos Polanza's concept of authoritarian messatism and Stuart Hall's concept of, of authoritarian populism, poses the problem of, of authoritarian neoliberalism in terms of a reconfiguration of the state into a less democratic entity through constitution, constitutional and legal changes that, that seek, seek to insulate, insulate it from social and political conflict. A, reconfig a reconfiguration that is further characteristic by a significant escalation in the state's propensity to employ force of coercion and intimidation, legal and extra-legal, complemented by a curtailment curt curt of citizens' formal freedoms and the repression and mar marginalization, mar marginalization of social resi resistan resistance movements. The institutional embedding of neoliberalism and its link with author authoritarian estatism theorized by, by Pulanzas raises in the context of the post 2007-8 crisis, a difference that is important in the analysis of the European context and, and of the very example with which I began my lecture. The difference lies in the importance of the European, European Union in establishing a framework of rules and obligations that commits states to neoliberal forms of regulation and response to the economic, political and social situation that is hitting that, that is hitting his member states at a time when, when the legitimacy of 
de Neoliberal Project is also in crisis. Como veis, me gustan mucho las subordinadas y lo estoy pasando mal. <laughs> European institutions are spreading a whole battery of measure, measures that are justified by the idea that there is no alternative, that no other response to the crisis is possible. Appealing to, to the very material circumstances of the moment, the purpose of the, of the state is redefining and its incapacity to reverse processes related to economic inequality is assumed as a divine truth. Mm -hmm. It is in this context that we say that the conceptual logic of, of the previous stage is broken. In this new stage that has opened up since the crisis, the aim is no longer to ne neutralize resistance through con con concessions. Mm -hmm. Instead, what happens is the following. Changes in legality and neutralize the scope of democratic institutions. Practice that seeks to marginalize and discipline dissident social movements, and policies that favor the exclusion of economically and socially vulnerable groups. The result of all of this is the centralization of power in the executive at the expense of popular participation, the repression of opposition forces, the restructuring of the state's race redistribute mechanisms and the transfer of the cost of the crisis to the citizenship. Um, uh, in the European context, the changes linked to, to authoritarian neoliberalism are accompanied by moralizing and, moralizing and punitive narratives that should not be overlooked in our analysis. On the one hand, the intensification of neoliberalism <coughs> since, the, since 2007 goes hand in hand with a shift of blame from financial institutions to individual and states in the following terms. The, city, the, citizen, the citizens and the state are responsible for the excesses of the financial sector and should therefore bear the burden of putting capitalism back on track. Indeed, Ian Brough recalls how, wolf, how welfare programs were accused of avoiding, avoiding the same morally questionable values that the state allowed to develop in the financial sector. The attack of, on pensions, cutting social spending or the dismantling of public services were part of an economic adjusting program that, following Lanzarote's approach, must also be read in terms of the discipline, discipline character of debt. From the point of view of the state debt, this moralizing narrative are inseparable from some of the transformation experiences in Spain. The, constitu the constitu constitutionalization of austerity and the budgetary priorization of debt repayment, even when Spain's debt pressure was not so high, is undeb indudablemente a good example of this. Likewise, the creation of Sareb and the consequent absorption of toxic assets from bank restructuring is also a part of this narrative. That of a moralizing neoliberalism. In relation to the later, the alignment with the fiscal and, taxa and taxation policies promoted and supervised by the Troika not only raises the problem of litter or no democratic participation of the population concerned, but also makes the punitive nature of this moral responsibility <coughs> for the crisis more emphatic. Whether through automatic sanctions against member states that do not meet fiscal targets, or to return to our example, through events such as Eurostat forcing Spain in 2021 to assume the entire debt of Sareb as public debt. Bueno, esto no sé si me hace una aclaración, pero eh, España siempre fue la balista de, de la deuda generada por Sale, Sareb y en 2021 Eurostat eh, obligó a España eh, a que fuese, bueno, que la deuda de la Sareb fuese calificada como deuda pública, aunque sea un organismo que pese a tener financiación pública y contar con una, una participación del Estado eh, bastante amplia, que se ha ampliado a raíz de, de lo ocurrido en 2021, tiene participación privada, 
pero ninguno de los participantes privados se va a responsabilizar de la deuda generada. Y bueno, pues eso podemos hablar más tarde luego. ¿Cuánto me queda? Sí, en 10 minutos. Vale. Cor eh, correspondingly, it is essential to underline that the problem of authoritarian neoliberalism cannot be, cannot be reduced to the rise of the anti-democratic discourse and policies of the extreme of the all right. Firstly, because as Pierre Randot, Christian Laval, Christian Laval and Wendy Brown are we, the position between democracy and neoliberalism is a constitutive opposition of neoliberal theory and practice itself. On the other hand, I believe that reducing authoritarian neoliberalism to the problem of the extreme right or the radical right <coughs> can make us lose sight of the fact fact that authoritarian neoliberalism is compatible, com, compatible with the fact that its economic, political and social transformations are driven by political parties that, at least discurs discursively, continue to defend some of the democratic values questioned by the, by the old right. In the same view, I would like to argue that although it is indisputable that there is an articulation between the, the old right and the reactionary channeling of social damage, I consider that the analysis of the internalization of authoritarian tendencies by certain social groups has a, great, has a greater scope when it is put in relation to the so-called crisis of the middle class. With Villalba's example in mind, I would like to offer some notes on the relationship I have just made between these two phenomena. During the 40s, the, the middle class emerged as a, category, as a category, category of social identification that had a potential to dissolute struggles based on the conflict of, of class division. The key to its social success lies not so much in the constitution of a full middle class, or a class media plena, mm -hmm. one that fits within certain thresholds of economic security, but in its asp aspirational component. It is a, ca a category linked, in effect, to a subject subject subjective position that is constituted in a variable articulation of different types of, cap uh, of capital, patrimonial, cult cultural, social, etc., which in turn establish different forms and levels of, of social integration. The middle class can be explained by its relation with higher education, by its uh, relationship with the guarantees of the welfare state, by its relation with familiarism, by its link with ideas of progress and modernization, or by its relation with property. In the libro of Manuel Rodríguez, the effect of the class media, just hace como an de todas estas figuras, que está muy bien para entenderlas. Pero, como digo aquí, of all these elements, the last, the property, is the one that uh, interests us most in our analysis. The negative effect of 2008 prices hit the middle class differently <laughs> depending on the degree of integration of the individuals concerned. The, the privatization of public services and the reduction of the guarantees offered by a welfare state affected above all the lower middle class affect, uh, affected above all the lower middle class also had to face employment, job insecurity, indebtedness, and even evictions. Although in many cases the subjective location of the middle class remains unchanged, in material terms there is a pro proletarization of these sectors that contrasts with the fate of that part of the middle class that is defined by its patrimonial, patrimonial wealth. The relative economic re recovery and the opportunity to make real estate assets profitable through the rental market means that the middle class with more than one home in property ownership is now, uh, is now a new figure. The rentista popular, que no sé cómo se traduciría. Mm, popular rentist. Popular rentist. Mm, es, bueno, es un término que utiliza, no se utiliza mucho, pero no sé, sigo otros países. Bueno, uh, another participant, also, the least socially condemned 
in the new co coordinates of real estate speculation. For Manuel Rodriguez, the result of these transformations is a society segmented into three positions. First, a middle class increasingly identifi identif uh, identified with rentier and, pat and patrimonial positions. Two, a broad social segments in the process of proletarization and characterized by a nostalgia for food protections provided by the welfare state that guaranteed its integration into the middle class. And three, another proletarized se sector excluded from the social guarantees associated with full citizenship <coughs> and subjected to different legal and political forms of exclusion. Faced with this scenario, Rodriguez argued that two hypotheses are open in relation to the crisis of the middle class. The articulation of a new social class made up of the proletarian position one and two, or the recomposition of the middle class, perdón, esto no es, perdón. The articulation of a new social class made, eh, made up of the made up of the proletarian positions two and three <laughs> or the recomposition of the middle class based on a fractionary model of social integration. It is the uh, it is the second hypothesis that I believe can be useful for thinking about the reaction, reactions to the Villalba Villalba's fire sitting in my intervention, and from a more general point of view, the widespread anim animosity that the housing movement, movement arouse, uh, arouses in people who identify, identify, identify him in a nostalgic way with the middle class suffer the consequences of the current social crisis of the rental housing market. The, ali the alias, the alias uh, between positions one and two cannot be built on the promise of the rearticulation of a, an expansive middle class, but by means of a symbolic recomposition in which the sense of grievance and threat of the former proletarian middle class is brought back to those below them, social, socially marginalized groups. As Rodriguez points out, the combination of neoliberal rationality with nationalist nar narratives causes the reactionary middle class to pour their frustration and resentment on the figures of the deserving poor and the foreign, foreigner or immigrant. Both are dangerous figures and ultimately difficult to assimilate, and both can serve as a symbolic adversaries among those willing to assimilate. The normal, the, integra the integrable, those who truly throw truly form the national community. Esto es también una cita de Rodríguez. Y voy acabando. The decline of failure of this middle class, far from promote, provoking a, a, a questioning of neoliberal meritocracy al día, is thus recreated in a kind of meritocracy, meritocracy of the miserable. Middle class sectors that see their status threatened Treating it, demand greater protection, demand greater protections from the state in order to safeguard or regain their position, and in doing in so doing, place themselves in a competitive relationship with the demands for social protection of lower classes. And under this logic, establishing who is morally deserving and who is not deserving of the state attention and protection is essential. <coughs> the different forms of violence direct, directed at the housing movement and in particular at those affected by the Villalba's fire take on a particular character through this development. When the deserving poor become squatters, the social resentment of the middle classes intensifies in its forms of expression. The contempt for poverty towards the deserved poor on the middle class can be deguised when the poor stay in their place. But when they believe themselves deserving of something they do, they do not have and take it, the content becomes an unbearable fire.